It's certainly a case of uh, good news and bad news on the labor front recently. We're gonna start with the bad, and the bad is very much Kellogg's, which decided that after 1,400 of their striking workers turned down uh, a proposed deal, they decided, yeah, this negotiation thing has been real and all, but let's just get rid of all of those people and hire on replacement workers. And that apparently is what they're choosing to do. Since uh, October, these workers have been striking in four different cities. Uh, and largely, there's a number of different reasons, including being massively overworked during the pandemic. But in particular, for the last six years, there's been what's called a two tier um, uh, employment system where there's different levels levels of benefits for people who've been around for different periods of time. The proposed deal that came about after about two months of these employees striking would have revised that system, but wouldn't actually have gotten rid of it, which is what these employers were working towards. So the workers turned down the deal. I believe we have a little bit of video demonstrating this. That's why we are striking, because we want the better pay, pension for everybody. It's not for only one group. I have this job because people like my dad that worked here before me for 34 years didn't give up stuff coming in. Exactly, and so they want to continue to push. I mean, this is the process of how strikes work. It's not you get one choice and then that's it, one deal and then that's it. But that's what Kellogg's wants. They know that these workers are willing to strike for longer. They've got the the durability to push for a better deal, and they want to just end the process right now. Uh, Francesca, why don't we start with you? What did you think about Kellogg's uh, move to to fire all these people? I mean. I, I like it's not surprising to me at all, and it, it it is a moment though because to fire to to do make this move in a time of increased worker power and increased consciousness among uh you know blue collar workers around this country and the jobs the factory jobs that are left in this country. It's bold, right? And it shows that Kellogg's thinks that they can get away with it. They, it's you know, it's it's no money, it's no sweat off their backs. Um, they can take the heat, they can take the negative press, because uh, you know John Iderola needs his pop tarts, and so you got to keep it, keep the ovens Why? cracking. <laughs> I just had to get you there, buddy. Mm -hmm. You got to boycott. Well, what you, you don't know is I announced earlier this week that I was boycotting Pop Tarts. So you're a little bit behind the news cycle there, Francesca. Uh, now, yeah. people at my job have been taking the Pop Tarts that were still around and leaving them around for me to try to break my resolve. But like the workers, I am going to be strong. <laughs> You will joking, not obviously. be broken. <laughs> we'll try not to. But yes, I mean, it is a it is a heartless move, and we'll see what happens, right? Like public opinion, and this is the thing: are mainstream outlets going to be covering this? Are they going to be talking to the workers? You know, um, more perfect union. Just hats off to them for covering strike after strike and just doing incredible work on the ground. I would like to see that from mainstream outlets, more more of them, right? Yeah. You know. Yeah, Francesca is right. It's definitely a heartless. I, I love the whole all for one and one for all mentality is what the workers of John Deere did as they mm -hmm. held out that two tier, you know, more workers with more seniority caring about the type of wages and benefits that the workers that are working by their side and who come right after them will have into the future. That is what true solidarity and leadership looks like. And you know, I want to see the federal government jump up in here. You know mm -hmm. what, them school breakfasts, uh, Kellogg's, them products, the, the Tony the Tiger, the crackers and all that, mm -hmm. guess what? We will not be purchasing any more of your products until you do right by these workers. See, there's always more than one way to skin a cat. Let's start taking the public contracts away from yes. them because they want to treat workers like that. These workers have children in the schools, in the very schools that serve oftentimes these cereals for breakfast. So yeah, let's, yeah. let's deal with let's deal with them. No more public contracts. That's a that's a great point. And um, you know, it, it's a, we were, during the break we were like uh, joking about like having a, an actual progressive president for once. Like imagine the effect it would have on the labor movement that like if Bernie Sanders was president, he would do what Obama said he was going to do was put on his marching shoes and stand on the picket line. But like Bernie does do that and well, members John, of the squad yeah. do that. They're supportive right now That's of right. unionization efforts. That's it, John. I, I def definitely have to jump. I mean, being with the senator for both of his presidential uh, candidacies, he definitely has been on the even before he started running for president. Let's be clear, check the receipts. He was on the picket lines uh, with the with the workers. But certainly during 2016 and 2020, the senator never failed to be on the picket lines with workers. I've been on. I mean, the senator went down to Bessemer, Alabama 
for mm-hmm. example. So yeah. did I, people like Congresswoman Cori Bush, other members of the squad, uh, people like our dear friend, Michael Render, Killer Mike, Mr. Glover, Dr. Cornell West. Y'all see the pattern? We're naming <laughs> all either progressive <laughs> activists or progressive thought leaders or progressive elected officials. That is the pattern. And yeah, hell yeah, the senator would be right there as president by their side. Yeah. Nothing shake. And you know, Jink and I talked about this the other last night on the on the power on the on the power hour, talking about the power panel, power hour. But you know, some of the things that can be done. And one of the things is, hey, uh, CEO Kellogg's, uh, I'm about to have a press conference. Now, either you will be there as the hero or the villain. You know, Jink and mm-hmm. I were talking mm-hmm. about that last night about some other group of people. The same playbook. You call these folks up. You're hurting American workers. You, oh, you're hurting the workers. You're hurting my my. You're hurting my agenda. You're hurting the people that I was elected to serve. So I tell you what, I'm about to have a press conference. Either you're going to be the hero or you're going to be the villain. Which one you want? I'm giving you a chance. Yeah. It's interesting too because I feel like on unions, you know, Biden is actually not as far to the right as he is on other issues, right? As he might yeah. be on student loan debt or he might be on, you know, raising corporate taxes. Um, it seems like something like the PRO Act out of all the yes. things we need to pass might Come have on. more of a chance. And I'm I'm not holding my breath at all. But you know, the president's statement when the Bessemer, Alabama vote was coming down in the Amazon factory uh, warehouse was was really surprising actually and and did make an impact. Mm-hmm. And I think it, you know we have to look for those openings, even though we're yeah. sort of greeted with a wall of status quo-ness right now. Um, and I think that one of those openings could be around uh, labor. And I think that the NLRB is starting to make calls that are much more progressive. Um, looking at the head, Lauren McFerrin is the head of it right now. She's been promoted from within, but she's she um, was appointed by Obama and she's doing some good stuff. So it's like, mm-hmm. that's the kind of moves. Remember, these folks are all appointed by the president. Um, that's, I think, where we could see some more progressive movement, hopefully, from this president. Thanks for watching The Young Turks. I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.